gamers. Recently, I watched a little video uh, called Next RTS Will Fail and This Is Why, something along those lines. You might have seen it on Reddit, you might have seen it on my YouTube, you might have seen it on my Twitch. And um, there's some things, right? Uh, I, I disagreed and agreed with the video, right? There were a lot of things that I liked, uh, some things that I didn't like, but uh, I kind of watched the video uh, at, at the end of my stream and I kind of didn't get all my uh, uh, arguments out there and my points. So I do want to start off by saying that I, I agree with the creator of the video, right, on a lot of things. But my main point was it's kind of all wishful thinking. And the reason for that is... Um, I think personally that gaming companies, RTS gaming companies, it's not that they don't necessarily know what they're doing, it's they don't have the funding. It's simple as that. I know there's like a, a, a you know, sometimes like a greater picture where developers just suck, they don't know what they're doing, they don't know what the consumers, aka gamers want, and that might be the case, but I think the huge, huge part of it is just the funding and the money needed to create a good art, good game in general, not just an RTS game. And that's something that be that's kind of uh, overshadowed by like, oh, developers just don't know what they're doing, which I think is personally wrong. So I'm gonna get into that a little bit, okay? So I think the next, the reason why next big RTS might fail is mainly due to lack of funding. Um, there are some RTS games being made. Uh, one of the biggest ones is by Frost Giant Studios. And they are very well aware on what they need to do and how they need to approach. And it's something they have talked about a lot uh, between themselves, how to approach this and how to modernize the approach to RTS games in order to make an RTS successful. Majority of the RTS indie companies fail for one simple reason. They don't have the funding. They lack the funding. In the video that I watched, uh, we've seen arguments like uh, RTS basically, uh, RTS games are failing because the focus is not the campaign, because back in the day when the games were popular, um, campaigns and single player content and custom games content like arcade was the main thing and that's why they were popular. Yes and no. Uh, I do think the campaign is extremely popular uh, content in the game. I, I don't think you can release an RTS game in this day and age without a campaign. I do think the arcade is very popular. I do think the custom maps are very popular. I don't think anyone disagrees with this. Uh, I think casual fan base, uh, majority of it, plays single player stuff and more casual stuff. And I, I think this is something that everyone agrees on. But there's a lot of things going into it, and it's not just as simple as RTS games don't focus on single player and that's about it. So I'm going to start uh, uh, from kind of the, the start, I guess, and go from there. Uh, so first things first, age of the players. Back in my day, kind of thing, this was RTS 95, 2000s, 2005, 2010. We were all younger, right? And multiplayer esports didn't exist as, as much as it does now. So games were made as a product that you purchase, you finish it, you move on. And you had way less games back in the day, right? Compared to now. Like you can go on Steam and buy a bunch of games if you want. But back in the day, you know, you were bu buying a CD, right? So you buy a game and you make sure you play it and you get your money's worth, right? When I play games back in the day, I would play a, a game until I finished it, right? Maybe then I replay it if I didn't have any other games to play on harder difficulty. Maybe I would try custom games. You kind of get the, the full value of the game because you can replay it. Maybe you play in land with friends for fun, yada yada and so on. Right now, the people that play RTS games are overwhelmingly between 25 and 40 year olds. This is our age group that plays RTS games and that plays uh, strategy games in general. We all have less time now. Uh, a lot of people have families, a lot of people have jobs, a lot of people are just not that much into games anymore in the first place. People have obligations, people have real life. So it's harder to buy a game and get into it really like uh, quite a bit most of the people, they buy a game, they don't like it, they move on. Why? Because there's so many games out there. You can buy so many games. 
no one buys a game now for 50 60 euros and they're like oh man i don't like it but i bought it so i might as well play it people just move on especially because we're not kids anymore and people have more money to spend that's how it works. Also, people are more reluctant to buy games from indie developers because they know that the funding isn't there and the game might not get the support that it needs. So I think that the reason why, one of the reasons why RTS games fail slash will fail slash might fail is because we're all older. There are no RTS games where the primary age group is like 10 to 16 year olds. It's all older people. That's how, that's how it works. And this kind of group is very good for sponsorships from, you know, trying to sell products to them in games and tournaments, but it's not very good for games because there are not a lot of 35 to 40 year olds that are gonna play the game 10 hours and tell their boomer friends to also play the game, unlike Fortnite, unlike CSGO, unlike League of Legends, and so on and so forth. Next thing, the reason why RTS games are failing more and more is because of the attention span. RTS games were the number one thing 20, 25 years ago. The thing that's changed is the attention span of people. And this is not just children, this is everyone's attention span. Back in the day, I would be downloading a, a game, a movie, uh, whatever, for hours. And that would be fine, right? That's how it was. These days, if I open a, a, a video and it doesn't load in three seconds, I move on to the next thing. Ain't nobody got time for that. And this is 100% true. You do this guaranteed as well. Sometimes you open a video, it doesn't load, you just close it and move on. You don't wait. Because attention span of people is much, much shorter than it used to be. And guess which game needs a very high attention span over long periods of time? RTS games. This is also why the games like first person shooters where it's a round after round, MOBA games where they are constantly reducing the respawn time because people don't want to wait, people want to go back into it. Games in general that have respawn and you're able to quickly jump into another game are extremely popular because people don't like waiting, people don't like dead air time, people don't like strategy games for that reason. That is how it works. Like this is not my opinion, this is proven right this is why the games are going the direction they're going this is why mobile games are popular because you can finish a mobile game in a minute and you move on to the next one or you quit the game that's just how it works and rts games they're not for everyone right shooters i feel like everyone can get into them you know they're quick they're fun you don't need to be extremely good you don't need to invest a lot of time you can just go in play them with your friends and move on Another problem, which this leads into the next one, RTS games are difficult. Okay, they're difficult. You don't just enter a StarCraft 2 match or Age of Empires 4 match and quickly learn a couple of things and then you play with your friends. It, it takes a little bit of learning, right? Whether you want it or not, you're gonna. There, there's so many videos explaining how to play RTS games, explaining the best way to do economy. There are no videos explaining how to press left click to shoot in a shooter, right? It's very simple, it's very straightforward. And this is another issue with RTS games and why they're not as popular anymore. Uh, and why a lot of people, even though they're RTS fans, they might be reluctant to play them. For example, I played Age of Empires 2. I quit Age of Empires 2 because I was overwhelmed with the amount of civilizations that there were. And I was like, I don't want to invest this much time playing a game if I'm going to have to learn 40 different civilizations or however many there are. Now, all these things I think have an impact on why RTS genre is not doing as well as other genres. Uh, I think RTS genre will never die specifically, like it, it will never have like 500 players. but. I think RTS genre in its current state will have extremely, extremely hard and challenging time reaching the popularity of CSGO and League of Legends and, and Dota and whatever else because of the time and era we're currently in. Next thing, which is in my opinion the biggest thing by far, I think that the whole motion that the developers don't know what they're doing, that's why RTS games are failing, I think it's completely incorrect. I have talked with a lot of developers 
Um, I don't mean this is like a, I'm bragging or whatever. I'm just trying to give you a point of view that I have talked with people who have made Command and Conquer, the original one. I've talked with people who have made Warcraft 3. I've talked with people who made StarCraft 2, the developers. Uh, I've talked with people who worked on Asian Empires, and I am in talks right now with people who worked on Asian Empires 4. And I can tell you one thing. They're all extremely passionate people for games. I'm not gonna say like RTS uh, developers are the most passionate, but they, they, I feel like they truly love their games. You know, they, they put in the effort, they have an idea on how they want the game to run. They try their best to, to, to make it as, as, as good as it can be. Now, this is the, the realistic part. We can say that uh, an RTS game lags this, lags that, lags this, lags that, and that, that's fine. That's easy to do. Pointing out the mistakes is very easy to do. The most difficult part about RTS games these days is funding. Let me ask you a question. You are a millionaire, billionaire, whatever, and you want to invest into gaming. You want to invest into a gaming company, and I come and I say, okay, on one side, you can invest in an RTS game that's going to have a, a age group of 25 to 40, and that will play less hours a day, and that will have about 10 to 15 times less players, but it's a really good game. Or you can make a CSGO, you can make a mobile game, it's gonna have 15 to 20 to 30 times more players, you can microtransaction shit out of it and make billions of dollars. Which one do you pick? It's not really an option. You're investing money. You're not investing potatoes. You're investing money to make money. And if you want to make money, you don't invest into RTS. It's sad, but that's how it is. Like investors are there to make money. That's all guys. At the end of the day, the developers have the passion. They want to make the games good, but they need the money. That without the money, their passion is nothing. You can't, it's like, it's like trying to live off of air. Air is amazing, but you can't eat it. You need money in order to eat. And that's how these companies work. Getting the funding for an RTS game is extremely, extremely difficult. Frostland Studios managed to do it because they have insane lineup of developers and they have good connections. And that's why Frost Giant Studios, if anyone has a chance to create the next huge thing, it's them. Because they have people who made Warcraft 3, Starcraft 2, Command and Conquer. They have the funding, they have the experience. They got everything they need. Okay, and this is why I'm so hopeful for them. But most RTS companies don't have that. They don't have millions and millions of funding. When a game comes out and someone says, oh man, they should have, their campaign should have been better. Uh, you should be able to uh, multiplayer the campaign. You, there should be arcade games. I don't think those developers disagree with you necessarily. I, I don't think that developer is like, you know what, you're wrong. Our campaigns suck. I don't think any developer says that. They don't have the money. That's the main issue. And I know I keep repeating it, but that is the core issue in RTS games. It's extremely hard to get the funding because of the things I've said. On to the next thing. Well, back in the day, they create a campaign. Uh, they, you know, you can play multiplayer, but there's no balancing for multiplayer, right? 20 years ago, there's no balancing for multiplayer. They released the game. They focus on single player. You finish it. You have the option to go multiplayer. There's no esports, no need to balance, no need to spend more resources into it. The game's done. You buy the game, you play the game, you finish it, they release a new, you know, whatever, StarCraft 2, you buy the game, you finish the game and move on. That's how it worked. These days, that doesn't work because it doesn't create or make enough money to justify the funding for the game. Uh, very, very few games work like this and are actually extremely profitable. For example, Elden Ring does this, where they do make really good amount of money, but that is one out of a million, okay? So the issue these days is RTS games, you sell them, but then this is a trick, right? This is the problem. Most of the games these days are free to play with monetization options. RTS games, if you didn't notice, almost all of them are sold. Why are they sold? How are you gonna make money? That's how they make money. So next issue, 
monetization in RTS games. If you guys don't know, League of Legends is making over 1.5 billion revenue every year by selling skins. That is a lot of money. Um, that is a lot of money. And of course, a company like Riot will then have thousands of employees that if something is bugged, something is wrong, they're going to fix it like this. They're making billions. Of course. You cannot do skin monetization in RTS game and be as successful as League of Legends or CSGO. That's a fact. Uh, StarCraft 2 has tried this. StarCraft 2 had skins in the game. And clearly, because Blizzard stopped supporting StarCraft, it did not make enough money to justify further investment into skins. Blizzard also tried putting in voice packs, which I thought was cool, but again, clearly didn't make enough money to justify all that production to make more. I think personally that skin in CSGO and League of Legends is much more impactful than in an RTS game because the units are smaller, you might not be able to see them. And also, if you really go super wild with the skins in an RTS game, it might look like a clown fiesta. Like if marines are suddenly cows cows or, or like spearmen are, I don't know, holding balloons, you know, like it, it's not an RTS game anymore. It, it, it would look weird, right? But in League of Legends, you know, you have like the pool party skins and they look fun and they kind of, you know, blend in and work well with the environment. People don't, this is, again, this is a fact, this is not opinion. People don't buy skins in RTS games as much as they do in MOBAs and shooters. Blizzard has tried in a couple of different ways to monetize StarCraft in order to support StarCraft further. They had skins, they had voice packs, and... There are two more things that I don't know if you guys even know about, but Blizzard also tried to create DLC campaigns, and I've also heard this from a lot of people. If, if the main focus is campaigns, why don't RTS companies just make campaigns and release them as DLC? Blizzard did that, and it did shit. It did not do good. Like, it just did it. I don't know why. They created the Nova Mission Pack, I thought it was cool. I'm not too into campaign. I played it. I enjoyed it. But clearly, if it was making millions, they would have made more, right? Because why wouldn't they? It's money. But it didn't. So they stopped. Then Blizzard tried selling arcade maps and sharing the money with the people who made the maps. There was only two for sale and no more. Why? Because it didn't sell, right? It didn't sell. That's just how it is. You can say the most of its success was the co-op commanders from StarCraft 2. But again, the development for the co-op commanders has stopped, so it clearly didn't make enough money. Because think about it, if it was making millions of dollars and they were profitable, why wouldn't they do it, right? Because they either broke even or it was not profitable. So. That's a problem, with, that's a huge issue with RTS games that I feel like a lot of people don't realize, right? RTS games are hard to make money with, they're hard to monetize. And when something is hard to monetize, it's also harder to get an investment for it. Because a lot of the investors, they don't want, they, they, they don't want to get a cut of like the percentage sold. They, they want to be able to keep making money with that game, right? Like imagine if you invested in, in Riot back in the day. Think about how much money you'd be making if you had a percentage share or whatever from skins or, and so on and so forth. So all these things combined makes it very hard for the investors and game developers, for the first ones to invest, for the second ones to create a, a, a big game. Because I don't know if you guys know, but you can Google some numbers of how much it costs to create a game. It is millions and millions and millions of dollars. It's a lot of money required to create a game. You need to pay years and years worth of salary for people. Games don't get created in six months. They get created over four, five, six years. A good one, you know, you, you can create a, a, a Minesweeper for less, but a good game. I think that is the main issue. Another thing I wanted to talk about is I, I made comments when I was watching that video that multiplayer is uh, what the focus should be on. And 
a lot of people disagreed with it because the casual player base uh, loves campaign, right? And a lot of people's opinion is they companies should focus more on single player instead of multiplayer because majority of the people who purchase the games don't play multiplayer. They, they just finish the campaign and they leave. But those people would leave anyway. And again, I, I know this for a fact, the RTS games that are being created right now, they're trying to make single player, aka campaigns, a transition, a tutorial into multiplayer. That is their goal. And again, this is not my opinion. I know this for a fact. The reason they're doing this is because once the person purchases the game, they're going to play the campaign either way. And even if they don't, they purchase the game. What they want to do, they need the player retention. They need the players to stay. And let's be honest, you can create the best campaign ever, but you're not going to have millions of players replaying campaign every day. You're just not. Unless they, they revolutionize the way campaign is, or they make a campaign like a, a new experience every time, campaign is played once, twice, three times, and people move on. I loved Warcraft 3 campaign, for example. I played it three times in my life, right? Over the past 20 years. There's no, me playing a campaign three times doesn't provide any money for the company. And I know you might think like, oh, I'm greedy, I'm just talking about money. But that is how, that is how the world works. Like, they don't live off of air, guys. The reason why they want to transition people from single player to multiplayer, well, because esports, right? Tournaments, streams, and so on. Streams are the best way to promote your games. Campaigns are not. It's the multiplayer, it's the tournaments. Tournaments get sponsorships. Because the age of the players is between 25 and 40, that is a very good age for the sponsorship deals because those people are more likely to buy stuff than a 12 year old eating his booger and playing Fortnite, right? You can't promote like Rolex watch to a 12 year old. So what companies are trying to do, a lot of them failing, is to have a single player experience be a nice little tra-la-la where, you know, they do focus on the stories, but their main goal is inserting those people into the community and into multiplayer so that they would keep playing the game. Not just finishing campaign and ditching, keep playing the game. Because that is a very, very important metric for your future sponsors, for your future investors, for perhaps monetization that you might have. Let's be honest, another thing guys, if there were skins in uh, whatever game comes out, and if you were only interested in campaign, what do you think are the chances that you would buy skins? Why the fuck would you buy skins? You're gonna play campaign once or twice and quit. People in multiplayer are way more likely to continue spending money. Like, because they're playing it more. So, in order to have different monetizations, like skins, like whatever, you need to make people make people. You need to get people to continue playing your game and invest more time into it. I would love if uh, you know campaigns were. I would love if all campaigns were. Uh, you were able to play with a friend, right? You, I invite you to the group, and we can go play campaign together. I would love that. I think that's great, and I think that would add replayability to the campaign and would give some longevity to the campaign. Or maybe, uh, you know, some kind of uh, a re reinvention of the campaign where, um, kind of like in Asian Empires 4 where you spawn with different resources, maybe the mission one is always the same mission, but maybe the map spawns are different, right? So that there's that replayability option. Like for example, you have 10 minutes to kill your opponent or whatever, but you don't know where the opponent is. You gotta go scout, right? You gotta build up your base, whatever. Uh, I think that's a cool way to reinvent the campaign and that gives the campaign replayability. So for that, for that kind of investment into single player, I'm all up for it because that would retain the players and make the players continue playing. Even if they finish the campaign once, they'll play it again and again. Maybe they're going to play with a friend. Maybe they'll play with a different friend. Maybe they'll pick a different civilization, different race and play the campaign again. So. That would be a great thing. But guess what? Bob and Joe making an indie company with three people are not going to be able to do that. They need money. 
that kind of thing, you can't just make it out of nowhere. You need money. So this all ties back into money. All these things are great. All these things I know are things that these developers that I've talked to thought about. That's why co-op in StarCraft 2 was created. That's the content I'm talking about. That's the good content. It's the replayable single player. I guess it's multiplayer because it's co-op, right? But it's versus AIs. It's chill, it's nice, and that's great content, right? That's amazing content. And the developers know this. It's just very hard to achieve that point and get to that point. So a lot of people were disagreeing with me that I said that single player campaign and yada yada should be an introduction to multiplayer. I, I still stick to that opinion. Like, it should be. That doesn't mean that you should take away from the campaign or away from the single player, but you should have a transition into multiplayer because the ultimate goal of the company is to grow their game and be able to retain players because that's what it's all about. As much as the developers love their games and have passion, they need the games to succeed as far as money goes in order to keep updating the game and keep you know investing into it. I saw a couple of people said uh, that, for example, Microsoft has so much money they can invest way, invest way more in A4. Just because a company has money doesn't mean they will invest. That's not, that's not how investing works. Blizzard has a lot of money. Why didn't they invest uh, another $100 million into StarCraft 2? Because they didn't think it was worth it. They didn't think they would get a return on it. That's how business works. And I've talked about this, but a lot of the decisions made in pretty much every company are like this. They create a game, and then let's say the game is completed. There's just minor adjustments. And if the developers go to their, uh, uh, you know, to the funding management or whatever the fuck it's called. And they say, hey, we need 3 million and we can make this experience much cooler. The question that they will be asked is how much money will we make from that? And if the answer is none, then the answer is no. That's how it works. I wish it was a, a, a you know a more rainbow like world where everything is amazing and perfect and you know developers go and say like hey we need 50 million dollars for this and they're like yeah have it fuck it we don't need uh, money back just take it i would love if that was the case but that's not the case and ultimately every company as much as you know people inside the company have uh, the will to make great games they're passionate gamers ultimately company's number one priority is making money the reason why i got a little heated during that video and like a little bit kind of what, whatever you want to call it angry negative is because i don't like when people call out developers that they don't know what they're doing and by the way there are there are definitely developers that are fucking clueless right for sure i don't know every single developer i don't maybe they're just maybe some developers are just stupid but just because the, the games are not being made in the perfect way in someone's eyes doesn't mean that developers don't know what they're doing or that they're lazy. Sometimes the simplest answer, actually mo more often than not, the simplest answer is the right one. And that is money. So yeah, uh, I do think that games in general are very competitive these days with so many companies making games. I mean, there's so many games coming out every day. So in order to create something special, something something new, something that's gonna, you know, blow up and have insane amounts of player base and make money and be popular, you need a couple of different things. You need good development, you need funding, you need to be lucky, right? That's another thing a lot of people don't consider. The timing of the game releases matters so much. If there's a streamer with 30,000 viewers who loves your game, that's like hundreds of thousands of people potentially they're gonna try out your game. And this is also not something that anyone brings up, but that plays a huge impact. If you guys don't know, Among Us was one of the games that came out two years before it became popular. And you know how it became popular? It was on Steam the whole time. It was unchanged. 
Soda Poppin, a streamer that has 20, 30k viewers, played it, and that game, game blew the fuck up because of a streamer. Now, RTS, I would say, is, is less so impacted by that, but of course, you know, when you have the big names in RTS community play a new game and they're like, this game's great, more people are likely to buy it. So, I think there's a lot of things going into creating a great game. And at the end of the day, you know, you, you might have good intentions, you might have good ideas, sometimes it just doesn't stick, you know? It just doesn't work out at the end of the day. Because like I said, it's not only your game that's good, there's a lot of games that are good, and guess what? The player base has a limited amount of time. You and I have a limited amount of time. If there's 20 RTSs right now that are really good, I can only play one or two. I can't play more than that. I don't have time and you don't either. So the competition for p players' attention is very high in this current day and age. Where back in the day, uh, you know, I'll, uh, we're gonna go back where we started. When I went to a PC store or PC shop or a, a CD shop, game shop, whatever, I don't know what, it, what it's called in English. When I went there, you know how it worked. I went there with my dad every week on a Saturday. And we would go in and we knew the guy and we would say, hey, which new games came out? And he looks at the CDs and he says, these two. And my dad says, pick one. And I pick one. I, I turn around the CD. I look, oh, these fights look cool. I buy it and I play it for full week until the next week where maybe, maybe I'll buy another game, right? That's how it worked. Now... It's like, if you open Steam, there's fucking millions of games, guys, online. Like, there, there's so many games. And the gaming, in general, is getting more and more competitive as far as the attention seeking from those games goes for your attention. Uh, because, like I said, people have a limited amount of time in the day. And they gotta attract you in order to play it. Another thing that I wanted to mention is um, a lot of people think that when there are bugs in games, I, uh, you know, a programmer can go and be like, uh, you know, co fix XD and then the problem is fixed. Okay, that's not how it works. Uh, if, if you don't know, maybe you don't know, maybe you do know, a lot of the changes in game are required to go through a process. That process is someone fixes something, then someone else needs to approve that, then someone else needs to approve that, and then it can be sent to the first person and say, release it. That's how it works. This doesn't get sorted in, in two hours. Obviously, the more money, the more employees you have, this is on faster, but these kinds of processes and approvals can last a few weeks. That's how it works, guys. I know people think, Man, this thing is bugged. They should fix it today. I would love that as well, but that's not how the real wor world works, sadly. It's not like, it's not like, so I was like, hey, Joe, hey, uh, this unit ain't moving properly. Can you fix it? He's like, hell yeah, brother, I'm gonna get on that. He's like, yeah, move properly. He's like, hey, I did it. Patch it in. That's not how, that's not how games work. Like, and in a way, it's sad to see how many people are flaming gaming companies, and I don't mean just AOE4, when they have no clue what they're talking about, you know? Like, th that's not how the things work. And yeah, I would love if shit was getting fixed faster than AOE4. I would love that. But it's not like a developer is sitting there and he's like, yeah, there's a bug, but you know what? Fuck him, dude, I'm not gonna fix it. I'm not gonna fix it. Fuck them. Let them uh, let them mold for two weeks. I'm just not gonna fix it on purpose. Do you like? Do you think developers are doing that? Anyway, thank you for joining me uh, uh, on my rant. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, you know a lot of you guys did not like the stuff that I, you know, the, the way I uh, voiced my opinion in that video where I reacted to the video on why RTS games will fail and this is why. So I wanted to make a video that's more like concise and more thought through from my side to kind of, uh, uh, you know, explain my point of view a little bit better. And a lot of the things that I've said today, I would say about 70, 80% of the stuff I said 
were not my opinion. They were things that were there that are facts that I know. They are facts, right? And then there's obviously some of my opinion added. Uh, but TLDR campaigns are fucking great. Casuals is what make the games. Casual without casuals, there's no game. Hardcore gamers are a huge minority, but I think both need each other in RTS games in order to succeed. But 100% RTS games are care not just RTS, Fortnite, CS:GO are carried by the casuals. Casuals is where the real power is. And the game developers should do anything in their power to retain and keep those casuals playing and give them enough content they will enjoy. And if I could choose, I would have every RTS game have an amazing campaign, have a co-op campaign, have, you know, co-op like from StarCraft, have custom games, have fun maps. But the problem is if they can make that happen. So casuals, I don't hate you. I appreciate you. All right. I know how important casual people are to the games because they are the majority, right? And uh, like I said, I'm sure there's developers that have no clue what they're doing, but I would say majority of the developers that I know that I've talked to are extremely passionate people and sometimes get way too much hate for something that's most likely out of their hands. So yeah. Thank you again for coming to my TED Talk. If you're watching on YouTube, let me know what you think. If you're watching on Twitch, let's keep going.